My current role is Vice-Chancellor at the University of Newcastle here in New South Wales in Australia. And it's been a scenic route to get to this point. I started off um, with uh, taking a, a journey in a medical career, um, but very quickly found that for me research and education was my passion. That brought me to Australia and I've worked at Monash, I've worked at the University of Adelaide and University of South Australia. And through my time in these great and different universities, I also found a passion for leadership. Um, leading a school, leading a department and a discipline, um, leading a faculty, um, leading a portfolio of research and innovation at a university level. And as uh, each of those challenges um, came my way, um, I realised I enjoyed uh, the challenge of uh, strategy, of vision, of uh, really responding to change, of uh, making sure that students and our research efforts were always at top of game and um, that challenge kept me moving until this opportunity at the University of Newcastle came up. I think sometimes one's greatest achievement can be you know something about a student whose life was simply changed by being part of an academic unit um, or a discipline where you have a clear that they would not have been there and not have fulfilled what they set out to do had it not been for a moment in time of where strategy and leadership and opportunity came together. I think in academia you broaden your portfolio when you take on roles that others might consider unlikely. I've sat on an advisory board for a theatre company at a university and that was tremendously helpful for me, a scientific medical researcher, to understand the different viewpoints of people around a board. Um, when asked to sit on research uh, grant bodies and to spend time going to Canberra, weeks of work before and during the process of grant review and sometimes people say that's too much time. For me I learned so much about um, what great people were doing across Australia. Um, I met great people around the table who were working as hard as I was and I came to recognise that the leaders of the future are the people who are working hard around those tables. Well the higher education system is global and so um, what we see are any changes across for instance the most recent of course was the massive open online course delivery, um, free MOOCs uh, for students across the world no matter where they were at no cost and and people immediately began to talk about you know the uber disruption that that was producing in higher education and it certainly caused some great jolts in our traditional way of thinking and about how and in what way to consider how students wish to learn and through what medium they wish to learn and that we are no longer going to see degrees being viewed in quite the same traditional way they've been viewed for the last 200 years. Sometimes every day in my day-to-day uh, -day meeting of uh, great partners in international or Australian, um, of meeting great students, of hosting an event for some remarkable alumni and uh, people who are such generous donors. There's always something where I'm taken aback by um, the generosity of spirit and its impact on students. We have uh, had a young student stand up having taken a program to uh, enter university. She was an indigenous student and she said as she spoke having achieved the qualification to come into the university that her father had been taken from his family and sat at the back of the class and had not been listened to nor heard and for her year with us to gain this qualification she had sat in the front of the class and she had been heard and she's now studying law at the university. So when I hear stories like that, there is definitely an energy to get up in the morning.